The following is a presentation of the United Wrestling Network. And welcome to another exciting edition of Championship Wrestling presented by Pro Shingle. I am Dustin Starr alongside my lovely Maria. Thanks for joining us as we are officially on the countdown to premiere of Championship Wrestling from Memphis yes. on February 27th. And today we have another great show in store. That's right. We're just four weeks away from the official premiere. And we'd like to take a moment to say thank you to all the great Memphis wrestling fans. Our February 14th taping is sold out in just a matter of days, and we can't wait to see you live at Top of the Line Banquet Hall in Memphis. Limited seats are still available for our next taping on March 7th at championshipwrestlingmemphis.com. You don't want to wait. Get your tickets today. Today's show is jam-packed with action from the United Wrestling Network, as we have three big title matches, including Nick Aldis, defending the NWA 10 pounds of gold in our main event. As you watch today's program, keep in mind, you could very well see these same athletes competing on Championship Wrestling yes. from Memphis in the near future. And we will start to introduce to you some of the stars who are already signed to appear on our new Memphis wrestling program. You know how we like to roll by now. Let's not talk about it. Let's be about it. It's time to head to the ring. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, and it is for the West Coast Pro Wrestling Championship. Introducing first, the challenger from Phoenix, Arizona, weighing in at 170 pounds, Phoenix's favorite son, E.J. Sparks. Welcome everyone to Primetime Live inside Thunder Studios. Talk Kennelly, Alyssa Marino, and the voice of the NWA, Joe Galley, here with the call of the action. And we are going to kick things off with a championship match. See EJ Sparks, the challenger there. He's got a tough task ahead. And introducing the champion from Phoenix, Arizona, weighing in at 258 pounds, he is the West Coast Pro Wrestling Champion, Hammerstone! I am so looking forward to this matchup in particular. We are starting things hot. We are starting things live here at Thunder Studios with a championship match. And look at the caliber of that champion, Hammerstone, weighing in at more than 250 pounds. EJ Sparks, he's got his work cut out for him. That's right, Hammerstone, the first and only West Coast Pro Wrestling Champion, standing tall and proud with that title. There you see Hammerstone putting the title in the face of the challenger, EJ Sparks, telling him what it's all about. You mentioned the inaugural West Coast Pro Champion had to go through a tough field to get there, Alyssa. An absolute. Defeated Bateman in the finals of a tournament. Here we go. EJ Sparks is Phoenix's favorite son. He's got a great kickboxing background, Joe, and a three-time Arizona State Champion. That's right, you know, I've been ringside for a lot of those championship wins that EJ Sparks had. He's always had a battle as an underdog. He's a little undersized in this matchup, but he's used to that in a lot of his matches that he's had in his career. He knows how to battle a bigger guy. If he can get out of this move, out of this hold here and get some punches and kicks, this could definitely go in his favor, and he could make history tonight live. Will history be made in our opening contest? Three big title matches coming your way here on Primetime Live. Trying to get out of a bad position here is EJ Sparks. And given his kickboxing background, Alyssa, as Joe mentioned, he really needs to find a way to create distance, get away from the grasp of this monster. You're absolutely right. I mean, Hammerstone is such a powerhouse. EJ Sparks really has to use his speed, his agility, and those lethal strikes if he wants to get the upper hand, like, like so. Here we see it. Strikes, punches, and bunches starting to string together the strikes. Well, he did oh. until then, Joe. How quickly the tide turns with Hammerstone coming in like a freight train. But look at the agility of Sparks looking to spark it up with a springboard. It to the forearm, he caught him on the jaw. 
Hammerstone's dazed, the champ is dazed. Springboard into the Superman punch. He's got the big man bewildered. Back him all the way to the corner and gonna keep that full court press going all over Hammerstone. I didn't expect this quick of a start for EJ Sparks. You know, Todd, I didn't doubt it. EJ Sparks is so fired up. Hammerstone had the nerve to just insult EJ Sparks' home, his home. EJ Sparks, Phoenix's favorite son, Hammerstone said that that's, that's something to be proud of. He used some rather unsavory language and compared it to being a big fish in a small pond, but no for this, EJ. Oh. And now it's, wow. things getting ugly here, trying to take EJ to the outside. Great balance, though, by Phoenix's favorite son. If he can continue to stick and move here, Joe, he gives himself options, gives himself opportunities. Yeah, he's got to use those strikes. He's got to use this agility, but he got caught right there by the veteran Hammerstone. Oh, the double underhook oh. just drags him over the middle rope. Let me and tell here. you, this is not where you want to be. He's got him up there in that butterfly oh, lock. Wow. Oh, incredible oh. power. Incredible strength from the champion. I don't know if EJ Sparks can recover. Hammerstone calls that the spinal countdown, and you can see the effects writhing in pain. There you get a good look at the challenger, EJ Sparks, in big trouble early. You know, I spoke to Hammerstone earlier before the match, and he said, who does EJ Sparks think he is? The audacity of EJ Sparks to challenge for this championship, and he's making EJ Sparks pay for it. He you know what, Joe, yeah. He's got his work cut out for him. He knows he's Phoenix's favorite son. We see it on Championship Wrestling from Arizona all the time. But this is primetime live. This is in front of an international audience. He wants to make a name for himself, and he can do that tonight if he can get back on his feet and back in this matchup. Need a quick roof repair, maybe 5, 10, 15 shingles? Pro Shingles' new speedy shingle service is just what you need. It's quick, fast, and speedy. They can help with even the smallest roofing repairs. Call Pro Shingle now, 901-258-6503. Come and see the stars of Championship Wrestling from Memphis on Sunday, March 7th at 2 p.m. Limited tickets are on sale now at championshipwrestlingmemphis.com. We are officially on the road to our premiere of Championship Wrestling from Memphis. That's right. Click over to championshipwrestlingmemphis.com to stay up to date and informed on all the latest Memphis wrestling news, including roster updates ticket sales, and even all new championship wrestling store featuring brand new designs from Memphis's newest signees. You can even pick up a brand new Maria Star t-shirt. That's my fave. Oh yeah. <laughs> Don't miss the premiere of Championship Wrestling from Memphis on Saturday, February 27th at high noon. And don't forget to join us live at our TV tapings on March the 7th. Last week on Championship Wrestling. Dan Joseph, the first ever graduate from the championship wrestling from Hollywood School. He's about to make history perhaps here. Look at this, he's got the champ where he wants him. Looking he's for that got him hooked way down. Up, long way down. We've, the Here's the oh. cover. New Two. official. No. Ah! Joseph has just won the championship. Dude, what? here is your winner. And new United Television Champion. The Dan Dan miracles. Indeed. Unbelievable. It's official. Making history. Dan Joseph is the champion. 500 episodes, 10 years, and this is the damnedest battle that we've ever seen from the heavens. Send SoCal distancing straight to hell. Lacey, let's do a Falls Count Anywhere match. Nico! Uh, we gonna have it? Oh, you know what? I, I can do that. Uh, that match starts now. Oh! Sign seal deliver, here we go, match four. It'll be Falls Count Anywhere, guys. Halston trying for the cheap shot. Lacey Ryan, whoa, Halston oh! in the dumpster! Oh! Halston body in the dumpster! Oh, digging into that dumpster, pulling out beer bottles here. We're right by the beach. Somebody out there having a good time. Oh, oh no, Nico! The bottle over the head, the skull of Nico Marquez! What just happened? Talk about hitting the bottle. Oh! In the end, Lacey Ryan with the running knee. Big victory. Now, get some revenge against Heather Monroe. All that and so much more on the fastest hour in pro wrestling. Watch in full at youtube.com slash championship wrestling.
He said EJ Sparks isn't ready for this kind of opportunity. The stakes are so high. There is West Coast Pro Wrestling gold on the line. And he just said, look how many of these I'm going to pull out. Talking about those beads that are in EJ Sparks' hair. Hammerstone, he's going to fight dirty in this Ooh. matchup with a dirty elbow right to the bridge of the nose. Yeah, dirty. I dare say diabolical. And nowhere to go but down in the corner there with Hammerstone. Hammerstone also an MLW national open weight champion. Defeated Brian Pillman Jr. in the finals of yet another tournament. So his titles, he has earned them. Which Gets the leg sweeped out. Which also goes to show the, the longevity of Hammerstone in the ring. His agility and resilience really stands for it. I don't know how much longevity there's going to be for the challenger, the way things are going right now, though, Joe Galley. Yeah, boot right across the neck, taking out the air. But EJ oh. Sparks in him with the kick. And now going upstairs, downstairs, anywhere in between. Big, stri big strong strikes to the face. And this could be his opening. This could create that separation you were talking about. Oh, no! Oh man, what a clothesline. Just when EJ Sparks had a light at the end of the tunnel, it was a big time freight train coming his way in the form of Hammerstone. The champ looking to put him away now into the cover. Is that gonna do it? No, EJ's got some fight, but out of the frying pan into the fire here, Alyssa. The three time Arizona State champion is in a bad way right now, Todd. And you gotta wonder, is it getting inside the mind of EJ Sparks having recently had another title bout against Dan Joseph that unfortunately wasn't successful? What do you say, EJ? Very true, but EJ did take Dan Joseph to the limit, and we'll see Dan Joseph defend the United Television title later. Hammerstone is dishing out a physical and a verbal beatdown throughout this match. Show. It's a total clinic for Hammerstone at this point, but Sparks right now, once again, back to his feet, showing that tenacity that comes with being uh, a former Arizona State champion, and now, once again, going for that whip. I don't know if that's a good strategy. I don't think he should be going for whips against Hammerstone. The guy's more than 250 pounds. He's got to pick better opportunities, and he might have found one right there. Oh, no, he did oh. not. What a toss. What a throw by the champion. Opportunity. That door closed in a hurry with a huge belly-to-belly -belly overhead throw. Look at the challenger now lifeless on the canvas. He's given it a hell of a fight, but Hammerstone is in complete, complete control of this opening contest of Primetime Live. Hammerstone absolutely composed, looking at EJ Sparks like predator and prey. And that whole, the ring completely rippled at the impact of EJ Sparks' body. Look at this, Joe, he's toying with him. You mentioned the beads earlier in the hair. He's absolutely toying, as, Al yeah. as Alyssa said, with his prey. Cat and mouse tactics here by the West Coast Pro Champ. Uh, I don't know how many cats weigh in at 255 pounds, but look at that abdominal stretch. Oh, it's just wearing down EJ Sparks. He has slowed this match down, and EJ Sparks, really, he's got nowhere to go. And what, what is Hammerstone thinking? Oh, man, what a slap. Oh, look at that, the elbow right into the hip and the ribs. Right into that cartilage, how painful that must be given the punishment. Look at this, doing everything he can to fight out of this. EJ Sparks has got unbelievable heart. You can't take that away from him. Oh. Great kick right to the side of the face, Alyssa. EJ Sparks putting those strikes to good use against Hammerstone. Hammerstone looks a little rocked off his uh, oh, center of gravity. Now the jawbreaker, and that is also going to test the equilibrium of the big man. He drops to the to his knees. That is a moral victory, if nothing else, for the challenger. But can he keep his pedal to the metal? It gave him a little bit of respite. Was enough to get that kick to the middle. Oh, oh. With a DDT! And the champ is down. The champ is down. Can EJ Sparks get to his feet? Can he capitalize? The problem is, though, Alyssa, with the original, with the residual damage, EJ Sparks was not able, if he could even just roll over and drape an arm, he might be able to make history. Now a count is on. We'll see if champion and challenger can answer and continue to fight on. What a match to kick off primetime live. You can feel the tension absolutely palpable between these two. Whoever's going to get the first strike is going to, oh, okay, get some kind of advantage here. There it is. There's that Muay Thai background. Employs it with a teep right to the chest. Oh, and it gets it with a super kick right to the chin. Oh, oh big cutter! This big could be it! This time he can capitalize Joe into the cover. History to be made. Here we go! Oh. No, so close. Heartbreak City there for EJ Sparks. But he has climbed back into this thing. I, I got to venture a guess that the overconfident Champion coming in isn't overconfident any longer, given the effort of the challenger. Oh, but he was able to catch that kick that was aimed right at his chin. Hammerstone showing that he was baited him in for that, and now he's got the rear waist lock. Oh, EJ Sparks, though, firing off some back elbows, trying to put some distance between himself and 
runs right into an uppercut. Hammerstone measured him there with that elbow, goes upstairs. Look at this, stringing together an onslaught of offense. And it's going from bad to worse here for EJ Sparks. Maybe Powerbomb forthcoming. Elevates him, sit out Powerbomb. That's got to do it. No, EJ no. still has some fight left. What's it going to take, guys? What a ten amount of tenacity from the challenger. EJ Sparks able to get his shoulders off the mat. This, this guy's got grit. He is a true warrior in this ring. Hammerstone, though, saying it's the beginning of the end there, Alyssa. He is, he really is. He's got it in for EJ Sparks. He was taking some umbrage with our referee, but now he's popping he's up for that. He's looking for that, that big yep. move. Oh, there! Pendulum connects! And this could be it. One, two, three. Champ retains. Here is your winner, and still West Coast Pro Wrestling Champion, Hammerstone. What a way to kick things off on Primetime Live, the Nightmare Pendulum dashing the dreams of EJ Sparks, the three-time Arizona State Champion, to add another title to his collection. How dominant is Hammerstone? And this is proof point, guys, what Primetime Live is all about. Hammerstone doesn't usually compete for the United Wrestling Network or, or the NWA, but he's here at Primetime Live. You got to love it. Choosing Pro Shingle is like picking the perfect tag team partner, right Dave? You got that right. It's simple and easy. They'll even file your insurance claim for you. Give them a call. Tell them Dave and Dustin sent you. 901-258-6503. Join us on Sunday, March 7th for our live TV tapings at Top of the Line Banquet Hall. Limited tickets are on sale now at championshipwrestlingmemphis.com. What's up, Memphis? This is Jaron Jackson Jr. from the Grizzlies, encouraging you all to shop where I shop, Platinum Jewelers here in Memphis. They do custom jewelry and have two locations in the area. One is 545 Perkins Extended in East Memphis. The other is 9387 Poplar next to Fresh Market in Germantown. Go to my spot, Platinum Jewelers. Brian Trammell, Rhino JB, rolling into Memphis. Premieres February 27th on ChampionshipWrestlingMemphis.com. Join us right now for live chat on youtube.com slash championship wrestling. Welcome back to the studio. That was our first look at Hammerstone from West Coast Pro Wrestling and MLW. He's a powerhouse to say the least. Yeah, speaking of powerhouse, could you imagine seeing Hammerstone versus Humongous at some point? Of course, Humongous will be on hand at our very first television tapings, and I hear that nobody can control the monster. Out of control seems to be the perfect segue to who's up next. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about the Dirty Daddy, Chris Dickinson. Fans, stay with us. Chris Dickinson is up next. You know who I am! The following contest is a singles match scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from Killa Hills, 10304, weighing at 245 pounds, the Dirty Daddy, Chris Dickinson. He is ready for a fight. Man, look at the intensity in his eyes. Chris Dickinson said here he's here to make a statement. And you can see it, yes, in his eyes that he is here and he is not messing around. Yeah, he didn't even wait to get started at the top of the program, just basically commandeered this show, talking to Dave Marquez saying, why aren't I somewhere else? Because I'm too dangerous. But now we'll have a chance to see the Dirty Daddy in action. And introducing his opponent from Lafayette, Louisiana, weighing in at 203 pounds, Showtime, Jordan Cruz. And we see the opposition for the Dirty Daddy, Jordan Showtime Cruz, great athlete for all, oh, oh. just absolutely gets way late. You talk about it, Joe, wasting no time is Dickinson. Well, he's here to send a big message that he is what professional wrestling is all about. And apparently pro wrestling is all about a huge charge oh. and a big clothesline on the ramp, Alyssa. Guys, I mean, I know about New Yorkers, I know about East Coasters, you don't waste any time, you just get straight to business, but I mean, this is a bit of a salty attitude toward, uh, 
record this broadcast. My goodness. <laughs> oh, man. Just kicking Jeez. Dickinson or kicking uh, his opponent there, Cruz, off the ramp. Oh, no, he's coming over here. Uh -uh. Wait, no, whoa, no. whoa, whoa, whoa. Has this match even started? I, I don't think, not officially, no. Allow me to introduce myself. I am the Dirty Daddy Chris Dickinson. And that right there is just an example of my work. A fine example indeed. But, but, I gotta say, Marquez, Billy Corgan, whoever the hell is behind primetime wrestling. Let me tell you right now, if this is the best you got, <laughs> This roster's in a whole lot of trouble. I've been sitting in the back watching match by match by match. I mean, I've been traveling all over the world the last two years, eating guys alive. And I'm not talking about just any old wrestlers, I'm talking about the best in the world. So, if this is it, look at this guy. Somebody get this guy a paramedic. You got a cell phone? Somebody call 911 for this jabroni. Look at him. This is what you got? This is why I'm here? I came to LA today for this. I came all the way here from New York City today for this shit. Wow. I think the referees were trying, you want? trying to wave oh, off you your guys, more? but Jordan you Cruz is more? making his way towards the ring. Cruz is not backing down. He wants his opportunity. He knows he's live. He's on primetime live. And look at that. He gets a big boot up. Trying to equalize this matchup as things just get started. And that's the resilience of Jordan Cruz. He's a skilled athlete, an athlete, a seasoned athlete, and he's here to prove it to himself here at Primetime Live. Yeah, he did get a fair shake to start this matchup. He got jumped on his way to the ring. He got clotheslined on that ramp. That ramp is racking up quite a few uh, victims tonight. And now this match starts in official capacity and quite an advantage in early edge, of course, to Dickinson, given his action. I mean, he's not taking this guy seriously at all. He didn't even tie his drawstring on his gear. And now he's just putting that boot right across the throat. I feel like Dickinson's kind of just playing with him at this point. Well, Todd, you were talking about Jordan Cruz almost being a victim of circumstance at the hands of Dickinson before this match even started. But I was talking to Dickinson, and he was telling me about how he's frustrated. He had so much momentum coming up to this year before everything got put on pause. And he's got a lot of aggression that he has come to take out on, unfortunately, Jordan Cruz. Well, that, that's great insight. And, and Jordan Cruz is paying for all of the frustration that Dickinson has, wide open shot, just when Jordan Cruz looked like he was gonna start to fight back up, work his way back in to this contest. Tough to fight up from underneath when you got absolutely getting blanketed by the Dirty Daddy. Just completely crushed by the Pork Chop Express as now he goes into the half crab. Oh, and look at that, look at the pain, the agony on the face of Cruz. But he's got a long way to go. Oh, and the stomps right to the back. Man. That is nasty there, Alyssa. That's double jeopardy. You're in the submission, locked in, just trying to find a way to counter, and then you're eating big strikes at the same time. But Jordan Cruz still finding a way, not giving up early on in this match, no matter how much is thrown against him, including... Snaps him close into the cover. God. Jordan Cruz, though, now still getting this shoulder up. This is a, a this 2019 is Lions Cup participant. This is it! Corgan! Marquez! This is it! Off the hair, let's go. Unbelievable anger by Dickinson, but Joe Galli, United Wrestling Network, and of course you would know the National Wrestling Alliance is built on competition, yeah. respect. I don't think Dickinson doesn't have respect for anybody but himself. He's showing it right here tonight on primetime live as Cruz went for it, but got caught and absolutely leveled. This could be in there. Wow, Cruz staying in this fight. I have to say, I am impressed by the resilience of Jordan Cruz, the fact that he's still fighting and he's still staying alive here against Chris Dickinson. Pre preserving his chances or perhaps delaying oh. the inevitable. That's up to you at, at home, fans. Another wicked shot echoing off the walls of Thunder Studios. And I got to believe that the Dirty Daddy is enjoying himself in there. It looks like he's calling for the end right now. Snap Marin, another kick to the spine. And you can see the skin on the back of Cruz. It is starting to turn red. It's getting discolored yeah. from all the impact. And he's trying to avoid a big German oh. suplex and does with a back elbow to the ear. More of the fight that you mentioned that you're impressed with there. Alyssa, rear waist lock trying to roll him up. Puts on the brakes. Does Dickinson, look at that, measured him beautifully with the drop kick and takes the dirty daddy off his feet. Perhaps a chance 
for Cruz to come out of the blocks offensively in this matchup. You know what, Todd? Cruz is an athlete. He played football back at State, and he studies the tape. Dickinson is a world-traveled competitor, and Jordan Cruz obviously had a lot to study about his opponent. And look at him flying through with a huge leg lariat. The window is open. Can he take advantage? But he's having a hard time getting to his feet. Cruz is from Louisiana. He calls that the big easy. He's won a lot of matches with that, and the Dirty Daddy's already back to his feet, but trying to press the advantage. Again, he was fighting from underneath. It's a miracle he even got back in the ring. Oh, but this oh, no, is not no, no, where you no, want to no. be. Not where you oh, want to be. Oh, what a counter! Oh, my God. Cover. oh, I thought we were going to have a huge upset right there. Almost took a trip to Upset City, USA. Was looking for a variation of that Pazuzu bomb. Now look at this, Tornado oh, Bulldog. Oh, 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 man. Throwing for distance, my goodness. Oh, man. Dickinson, you can see that martial arts background coming into play, the strength and the fury of Dickinson. Plants him with the Death Valley driver, spiked him, and that's gonna do it. Impressive, spikes him with the DVD, got the jump on Jordan Cruz. I gotta mention that I really, he might not respect Jordan Cruz, talk, Cruz talking about Dickinson, but you gotta respect the heart of Showtime Cruz, but this guy does what he wants to who he wants, when he wants. Looking for a new wrestling podcast? Listen to Brian Trammell and the best little wrestling podcast in the business. Available on your favorite podcast providers at stspod.club. That suits you. We really suit you. Burger or grilled cheese? <laughs> grilled cheese. Very good. I went with crispy tenders and the tops. It's patty. Mm, really fresh. I'm going to try to chow this thing down before I get to the wrapper. It's Sonic Wacky Pack. Top of the Line Banquet Hall is a stunning venue in Memphis, perfect for your big day. They can help you create your party, wedding, reception, and more. Check them out at 3674 Ridgeway Road or call 901-396-8684. Dustin's weekly wardrobe is courtesy of Suits You. They really suit you. Poor Jordan Cruz. He didn't have to compete. <laughs> Love the <laughs> never say die attitude, yeah. but Chris Dickinson was relentless in this one. Par for the course with him. Yeah, of course. Up next, we want to take you inside the training facility of one of the most dangerous men to sign with championship wrestling from Memphis. He's new to Memphis, but we expect him to be a household name in record time. His name is Jace Osei. And then it's back to the ring where the United TV title will be on the line. Stay with us. Is this, but for real though, this is the start of the interview, yes. right? And that's, yeah. there we go. Behind the scenes, Dan Joseph's awesome. There is very much an art to wrestling. And some people, I'm sure it comes naturally and it just clicks and they like, okay, I know and I'm listening and I hear and I understand. It took a little while longer for me, for sure. Growing up, I you know played hockey forever. I, I used to play defense. So I'm eyeballing, I'm looking around, and somebody's looking behind them to catch a pass, and I'm just charging, lowering that shoulder and hitting them. Uh, after high school, I did a lot of bar league hockey and a lot of, a lot of things like that. But I missed that physicality, especially. I wanted something that was like, you know, real, I could feel that. I could lay that shoulder into somebody or, you know, pick them up and throw them. And wrestling, that's exactly it. 
Nice suplex there by the champion. There you go. When I showed up to the first taping I'd ever gone to, um, I had been training for about six months or so. I, I did a bunch, bunch of practice matches. You know, you work on this and that, and uh, none of them were very good yet. But I looked physical, like I could move. I could move, I could, you know, get beat up. Hey, who can't get beat up? I could get beat up. So I showed up, and my debut match was against James Morgan. I had nice purple and black tights on. I had borrowed kick pads. I got beat to hell in a few minutes. That is skill. Morgan is just destroyed. Who is this kid anyway? I thought we did decent in pack three. I thought we had a pretty good run. Um, and I thought we were pretty entertaining. I mean, if we're being really real about it, that was a spectacle. That was a coach and a water boy. And Dylan, he very much knew what he was doing. And I was along for the ride, and I was learning very much so at that point. But I, I didn't feel very confident in my in-ring ability at the time. Oh, tried to plant Yuma, but oh no, it turned on him! Sex Factor! Sex Factor center of the ring! Three weeks, a month after we won the titles, I got injured, hurt my knee, boom, at the gym. I jumped about an inch, blew my knee out. Terrible, terrible. Took forever to get back. Finally, I get back to wrestling. I start working again, I'm going, few matches, I'm like three matches in, I get a hernia. Are you kidding me? I'm just getting back into this, I have a hernia. Another surgery, and then I get a call from Dave, Dave Marquez. He gave me a call one day and said, do you wanna try announcing? And yes, you know, I had been injured, I was trying to get back, I wanted to stay active and, you know, current, and I guess, he liked the way I communicated, so he gave it a shot. Started talking. Anything can happen. I might enter. I might win the Rumble tonight. Joe might win it. You don't know. And now, I'm watching the match, and I'm seeing it live. I'm seeing what everybody does, how it looks, how the fans react, what the people, and, you know, what the producers are saying in my ear. And then, I go home, and, you know, a week later, I watch it again. It just helps me, like, okay, so don't do that anymore. Do that. Be more like this, don't be like that. And it, I feel like a different wrestler from my time announcing more so than, you know, more so of a change than any other point. Stand up, man. Stand up, man. Winning the title was, it was awesome out there. The crowd's energy, you know, you feel all that excitement. You've just been throwing and duking it out, you know, for 15 minutes or whatever. And it's, then it's over and you're holding that. And it's, it's nice, you know, it's, it's, it, it's awesome. Like, I felt like I really earned that spot, you know, over the years and years that I had been there and, and getting it, winning the championship was, was like, it was, it, was, it was great. It was a very real reaction. Shane, I got it! Shane! Shane, I got it, baby! Shane, I got it, baby! Just holding that, knowing how far I've come from getting squashed to this moment, you know, in my home promotion where I started, you know, literally on TV with them, it's... It's very, very nice, and I would like to hold on to that for as long as I can. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, and it is for the United Television Championship. Introducing first, the champion from Buffalo, New York, weighing in at 207 pounds. He is the United Television Champion, Dan Joseph. Wow. Look at the energy. Look at the enthusiasm. It's hard you not to that. love Dan Joseph. You hear it. I hear it, Dan Joseph. I don't hear much. There's no crowd here, but I hear it. You ready, dude? I'm ready. You're so big. Why are you so He's such big? an impressive athlete. You know, there was a time where he was injured. He was sidelined. He had to do commentary as well. He always brings the energy. Always a fun guy to be around. The same cannot be said for the challenger. And introducing the challenger, being accompanied to the ring by Howdy Price from Richmond, California, weighing in at 210 and three quarter pounds, timeless Levi Shapiro. Howdy Price, the manager, the charging bowl with the golden horns, got himself another meal ticket in Levi Shapiro. This is the third opportunity for Shapiro. He does hold a victory over Dan Joseph, albeit by disqualification. Is third time the charm for Shapiro? That is the question, Todd. Is the third time the charm? I had the chance to speak to Levi Shapiro before the match, and he told me that he has been boasting about bringing championship gold back to the Bay Area. Is this where we're going to see him do it? Howdy Price would like to bring championship gold back to the 
to the Price Check Ranch, Joe Galley. Well, that's 100% right. And you have to kind of, it really shows how good of a manager Howdy Price is. He's been able to wheel and deal his way to get him another opportunity. Levi Shapiro on primetime live in front of an international audience could make history and become the next TV champ. United Television Championship up for grabs in this one. Still to come, the 10 pounds of gold. The National Treasure, Nick Aldis, defends against an intriguing opponent in Mike Bennett. Bell sounds set for championship action. Keep an eye on that glove of the challenger guys. Well, that's right. He can use it in a, in a bunch of different ways, and I've seen it get loaded up a time or two, TK. Alyssa well, has also been known as Shapiro. He's, been, he's mastered that iron claw. It's been such a weapon in the history of professional wrestler, wrestling, the likes of Killer Kowalski or Kerry Von Erich, and certainly in the playbook as well of Levi Shapiro. Levi Shapiro, that claw that after uh, an arm injury sustained by Levi Shapiro, the tendons healed too tightly, and it just gave him this monstrous, inhuman strength, that vice-like grip. I shook his hand once. I couldn't sign my name for three months. <laughs> You're braver than I am, Joe Galley. Collar and elbow lockup. Going downstairs and the roughneck tactics here by the challenger Levi Shapiro scooping a slam. Shapiro won't make a lot of mistakes. He's timeless. He's kind of a throwback. Considers himself to be 21st century old school. Big scoop and a slam there by Dan Joseph. The action hot and heavy. Dan Joseph won the title. Open challenge. Defeated then champion Royce Isaacs to claim the gold. It was a huge upset. Stu Stone was on the call at the time and said, do you believe in miracles? But Dan Joseph, I think there's something so vivacious about his energy. I think even the viewers at home can feel the energy of Dan Joseph. And if you're using the hashtag at home, hashtag primetime live, tell us what you think about the broadcast so far and share with us your things, thoughts on this match as a cover from Dan Joseph to retain the championship. Only gets the two count there, but Dan Joseph, ever the crafty veteran now, going up to the middle rope, knows he could deliver something big, but Howdy Price with the distraction, grabbing at the boot, and look at that big right hand to the face. Howdy Price, you can hear that maniacal laugh. He put his grubby paws on the champion and allowing him to take the driver's seat of this championship matchup. United Television title on the line. Look at this now, wear down tactics here by Levi Shapiro, trying to stretch the champion. You mentioned uh, Dan Joseph's time on commentary. He mentioned to me that really helped him. He was nursing a knee injury, he had knee surgery, and he said it allowed him to have a different vantage point. He could scout everybody, he could pick up all the little nuances. Look out here, picks up the pace. Nice basement <laughs> drop God. kick. Into the cover, oh, hey, try, try again. Oh, he got him, what? what? That was it? Whoa. Whoa. Is your winner and still United Television Champion, Dan. Joseph. Incredible, but oh, oh man! Scott Johnson just got leveled by Levi Shapiro. Levi Shapiro oh, absolutely wow. incredulous and now just hauling off with the blows to the cranium of Dan Joseph. Oh, what a poor sport. Oh my God. Oh, wow. Now taking the champ down. Champ caught him sleeping there with that short drop kick. Got full extension. Shapiro dragging the champ all the way to the back. Howdy Price. Yeah. Pouring him. He's, what are you doing? Top of the line banquet hall is the new home of championship wrestling from Memphis. Schedule your party or special event by calling 901 396 8684. I feel like I'm the good kind of spicy. It means you got an edge. I got an yeah, edge. He's got some ump, and I got some ump. I don't know about your ump, but uh, impatience doesn't equal spicy. Mm -hmm. Sonic <laughs> Chicken Slinger. Is it a good ump or a bad ump? <laughs> What's up, Memphis? This is Jaron Jackson Jr. from the Grizzlies, encouraging you all to shop where I shop. Platinum Jewelers here in Memphis. They do custom jewelry and have two locations in the area. One is 545 Perkins Extended in East Memphis. The other is 9387 Poplar next to Fresh Market in Germantown. Go to my spot, Platinum Jewelers. Brian Trammell, Rhino JB, rolling into Memphis. Premieres February 27th on ChampionshipWrestlingMemphis.com. Welcome back. Two title matches down and one still to come in our main event. The 10 pounds of gold will be on the line when Nick Aldis defends against Mike Bennett. But you know, it's got me thinking. Well, you know how much I love gold. How will we crown <laughs> our first champion in Memphis? And better yet, who will be crowned our first champion in Memphis? 
Will it be Alan Steele, the Memphis Mauler? Or could it be Derek King? Or maybe Action Jackson. Yeah. He's exciting. Or maybe the gun show Brett Michaels. Oh man, fans, stay tuned for more information regarding that. And be sure to get your tickets for March 7th in Memphis at Top of the Line at Banquet Hall. Ringside are just $15. General admission is only 10. And of course, kids are just five. They will sell out just like February's event. It's main event time in the 901. Yeah. Nick Aldis defends the NWA world title against Mike Bennett, who has Maria, not this Maria, ringside with him. You know, I kind of <laughs> smell a feud brewing already. That main event match is next. The wait is over, guys. Main event time here on Primetime Live. I tell you guys, I got chills. The months that have been leading up to this matchup. And here comes the challenger with his wife, Maria Bennett. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, and it is for the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship. Introducing first, the challenger, being accompanied to the ring by Mrs. Bennett from Boston, Massachusetts, weighing in at 206 pounds, Mike Bennett. Referred to as Mrs. Bennett there, you'll recall that Mike Bennett took the Canellis nickname or last name in another promotion and now, out of respect for her husband, returning the favor is Maria. Maria, ever so supportive. This is all about family. This is about their legacy, their, their family dynasty, and Maria is here to be that support for her husband in this matchup. What a fire in Bennett's eyes when he made that impassioned plea, the challenge. I need this. I need the world's heavyweight championship. I need to return honor and prestige to my legacy and to my family name. Yeah, but you know what? All that obsession, you know, that could really narrow your focus. And if it narrows it too much, he won't be able to see what's coming on his flanks right here. And that can make for a real dangerous situation when you're going up against the dealer. You know he's got an ace up his sleeve. No question about it. Did Mike Bennett just put too much weight on his shoulders, putting everything into one basket? He's got the opportunity he asked for, and moments remain. I, I have to think that this is a strategy by Nick Aldis. Oh, but Nick Aldis, he's coming right out. He's not waiting. He's ready. He is here strictly business. He's going to put that title on the line. This is going to be incredible. The national treasure. Nick Aldis, his second reign with the 10 pounds of gold. He's held the title since October 21st of 2018. You were on the call, NWE 70, when he won the title back from the American Nightmare Cody. He has been the champion ever since. Holding on to it with both hands. Doesn't want to let it go and certainly doesn't want to let it go on prime time live and look at Bennett. I think it's important for Bennett to get a quick start. If you're, if you're playing the Alabama Crimson Tide, you want to run back that opening kickoff. You want to get some confidence, erase that doubt you might have, and he's backed up the champion. He's rocking the champion right now, Alyssa. And Bennett, his strength, his condition. Oh, oh no! My God. Oh, no! Oh, Jeremy no, no, Marcus no. just got cut in half. Mike Bennett can't believe it. Nick Aldis able to sidestep. I, I, can't, I can't imagine Nick did that on purpose. No, he got out of the way, Jeez. simply enough, of the challenger. But now oh. this thing is broken down in a hurry. There's no this official, and the fight has gone to the outside. Emotionally charged challenger all over the champion. Mike Bennett going to work. You've got Mrs. Bennett on the outside taking a look as well. Deposits the champion on the ramp all over Thunder Studios here, guys. Well, I have to say, Mike Bennett, he's trying to take advantage of this. They're all fighting on the outside. As long as there's no official here, he's just going to keep more pain and punishment on the champ. It was an unpredictable challenge from Bennett. This has been an unpredictable start with the referee. Oh, no. Look out here. Oh, no, no, no way, oh. no way. Tombstone oh. on the ramp, my goodness, in the opening minutes. Oh, 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 oh man. my God. Joe Galley, you were talking about that, that obsession of Mike Bennett. Did that tunnel vision just put him in this precarious situation with, with the champion? And Mrs. Bennett trying to run to her husband, see if he can be conscious here. I mean, we, we might not need to get medical oh officials out here. He, he's out. Got tombstone on the ramp, completely laid out. I mean, what a wild start to this championship main event. The national treasure making his way over to the timekeeper's area. He's got the title. Whoa, whoa, he's got the belt. What's he doing with the belt? Step aside. Step aside, Maria. Don't let me in. This is my husband. I am not stepping aside. You're going to put that back. Oh, you're not going to step aside? No. Okay, someone else. 
Don't do it, Aldis. Oh, the oh my oh, goodness. No. The insurance policy, it's been renewed. Here comes Camille. Boy, this has been absolutely wild. Camille now out here to fend off Mrs. Bennett. And again, now we can look maybe in the distance. You've got to wonder if the challenger has even started to stir. Well, he certainly has oh! huge crossbody. Oh! Takes out the champ. Bennett gave everything that he had into that huge dive, put all of his weight behind it. The champ's off his feet. Unbelievable, but that might have been a last ditch effort. We got officials coming out here now, attending to referee Jeremy Marcus, the original official who got absolutely speared oh. out of his shoes. And now we have a count on on the outside. Don't tell me this thing's gonna end in a double count out. Not like this. This isn't the way. Mike Bennett has so much riding on this match, so much going for his for his family, for his his legacy, for reclaiming everything. He's a desperate man. Joe Galli, you have called a number, a ton of NWA World's Heavyweight title matches. I don't know if you've seen anything as unpredictable and wild as this. This is completely different than anything that I've called on NWA Power or any of the other pay-per-views. But look at that, the champion staying in this match, and so is Bennett exchanging blows, center of the ring. We're starting from zero, guys. Back to square one. Champion, challenger, trading in the center of the ring. It's gotta be the desperation, the drive, the desire of Bennett that just enabled him to get back to his feet. Look out, man, Daddy Driver, MDD, a little throwback. Gonna throw Bennett back. Oh. Down the ladder of contention, but not yet. Bennett kicks out yet again. I have to say, so impressive. But look at the concern on the face of Mrs. Bennett. Still there, still looking on, still trying to give her support. But Mike Bennett, his, you've got to imagine what is going through the mind of Mike Bennett. His, his whole family, his kids, his wife, just proving this not only to them, but to himself. A second ago was the forearm of the champion going through his mind. Desperation, super kick. Just Herculean effort by the challenger, not to be outdone, and he floors the champion with a clothesline. Okay. Going for oh the God. cover, gonna make history it's here it. at Thunder Studios. Oh. No, close call, two count only. A beautiful combination of strikes by Mike Bennett, that ripcord back elbow, following it up with the clothesline, but he's gotta stay on top of Nick Aldis, and he is right on top of him. Oh, and Looks like he might be targeting the neck now, trying to wear that down. And you know what, Bennett, can, if he can nail that Hail Mary, that big pile driver, we could be looking at a new champ. You know, he looks like he's softened him up, Joe. He's going with the clothesline, look out. Oh, not another tombstone. Oh. Oh, if no, he no, hits no. this, that's oh, gonna oh, it's over. Spikes it's him. over. And now paying homage, he loves this sequence, does the champion, the tombstone into the elbow, a little throwback to Tom Bellington, the Dynamite Kid, one of the inspirations of the champ, sticks him with the elbow. That's got to do it. Thanks for playing. What? No. Incredible! Oh, my God. Mask up Memphis. Protect yourself and others from COVID-19 by wearing a mask. That's right. Just like this. No, Dustin. No. I got it. Hold on. Are you trying to get this wrong? <laughs> the proper way to wear a mask is to cover your nose and your mouth. <laughs> there you go. Prevent the spread. Mask up, Memphis. Mid-South weather laying the smack down on your roof? Let Pro Shingle help today. Whether it's a repair, cleaning, or a brand new roof, Pro Shingle offers free estimates and financing plans to help right now. Call 901-258-6503. Join us on Sunday, March 7th for our live TV tapings at Top of the Line Banquet Hall. Limited tickets are on sale now at championshipwrestlingmemphis.com. There's a lot coming up here at Championship Wrestling presented by Pro Shingle, especially with the launch premiere of Championship Wrestling from Memphis. So, let's take a quick look. First, those of you who were able to get your hands on tickets for the very first TV tapings in Memphis, we're going to see you on February 14th at Top of the Line. You're in for a real treat. But, Saturday the 13th, you'll want to be at EPW in Boonville, Mississippi for the hottest pro wrestling in Mississippi featuring women's wrestling star, Amber Rodriguez. I hear she's the real deal. Yeah. Plus, EPW is loaded with great talent, some of which you'll be seeing on Championship Wrestling from Memphis. Then, on February 27th, it's the premiere of Championship Wrestling, right here on CW30 and YouTube Premiere. We can't wait for 
after that. Also premiering on February 27th, immediately following the new show, it'll be the debut of the brand new championship wrestling podcast with BT and Rhino JB called Rolling Into Mempho. Rolling Into Mempho. Oh, <laughs> man. The boys will recap the show. They're going to tell you what they like, what they didn't like, and so much more. And of course, there are still tickets remaining for our next TV taping on March 7th, but we fully expect those to be sold out very soon. So head over to championshipwrestlingmemphis.com and grab them while you still can. For more information, follow us on social at CW30Wrestling or simply click click championshipwrestlingmemphis.com. Join us right now for live chat on youtube.com slash championshipwrestling. Mike Bennett, still alive. And you're wondering, is... Is he hearing Mrs. Bennett on the outside, trying to rally him, trying to get him to his feet? At this point, I'm wondering if he's even human. I mean, he's withstand so much pain, so much punishment by the champion, and he's still able to cut him off at the pass. I think, I think he, he said it, and it's coming to fruition. He's a man who's truly fighting for his very life in there, Joe Galley. And now that desperation, it could lead to something real big. This could be the deciding factor in the matchup right here. Oh my God. Oh, this has him up. Oh! Superplex all the way down, and you can see the anguish. Look at that all over the champion's face. Spear by Bennett doesn't hit the official this time. Hits the world heavyweight champion. And oh, no. man. The resiliency of the national treasure on full display takes the superplex off of the top, and then a huge spear still, still able to get the shoulder up. And Nick Aldis is just, it's inhuman. But I guess you don't go through two reigns as yeah. the end of the oh, no. eight. Oh, no. Oh, looking no. For it. You he's talked about it. He's going to he throw said, the long ball. Looking for the Hail Mary. Cut off there. Now looking to return the favor as the national treasure. Oh. Backdrop attempt. Holding on for dear life as the champion takes him over, creating distance. Yeah. Who's going to get the upper hand here? What a scramble. Super kick by the challenger. The pace picking up in a hurry, Joe. And look at this. Another big move. This could be oh, oh. Oh, driver. This is going to be it. If he can get into the cover, we got a new champ right here. Ten pounds of gold on the line. Mrs. Bennett begging for her husband. Get in the cover. Hooks the leg. This is it. Oh, oh. look at that. Oh. Presence of mind somehow, some way. The champion on his veteran wares gets his foot on the rope. He hit the Hail Mary. He was going to sure as hell be full of grace if he became the world's heavyweight champion. And all this somehow pre preserves himself. Look out here, Joe. Mrs. Bennett, she's got the 10 pounds of gold. She's got the title. What's she doing? Not just a desperate man, a desperate family. Everything, everything is on the line for the Bennett family here, Joe, but you can't do it this late. Look at the eyes, the fire in the eyes of the challenger, Mike Bennett. He What's he gonna do? He can't use it as a weapon. He'll just end up getting disqualified. I mean, Ben Roberts, the official, he's right there. What's he thinking? What could be going through his mind? No. Referee tell him no, oh my goodness. That, lust, that gold lust perhaps there this he's isn't better who, of it. This is the honor of Mike Bennett. This oh, isn't who Mike Bennett is. He's this going, isn't how he's going to win. He's going for it again. Sprawls out as the champion. Great defense there. Eats the boot, though. Bennett will not say die. Continues the battle here, guys. Oh, no. Got caught. Oh, no. Can he lock it in? Can he lock it in? Bennett's fighting with everything he's got. Doesn't want to get in that Kingsling Cloverleaf. He's screaming with everything he's got, but look at the hands. Their claps are on the thigh. That's it. He stepped over. Bennett's got nowhere to go. His life is on the line. Oh, is he going to tap? You can't. Here's your chance. Somehow, some way, get to the ropes. And he is just reaching out for Mrs. Ben, and he is reaching out for Maria. He knows if he taps, that could be it. It'll be over. He may never get another chance. The referee is right there checking with the challenger, Mike Bennett, trying to push up now out of this thing, trying to switch the weight. Alyssa, if there's anybody that could get out of this, he could do it. He was saying, I need this. He was yelling, I need this. Oh, my goodness, what a powerful, emotional moment. He's in a bad way, though, Joe Galley. You've oh. seen the champ put countless people away with the King's Lynn Cloverleaf. And Ben, he is scrambling. He's trying to get an ankle pick. He's trying to do anything he can. And look at Maria on the side, begging her husband. Oh, no. He's starting to go down here, Joe. He's losing strength. He's not trying to counter anymore. What's he got left? Come on! Oh, my goodness. Break the hold. Break the hold. The NWA World's Heavyweight Champion, the National Treasure, Nick 
Valdis. What a powerful emotional moment here, Joe Gallo. I don't, I don't even know what to say. This is the most chaotic defense that Nick Aldis has ever had for the 10 pounds of gold, but he was able to do it. The national treasure was able to do it and hold on to Sweet Charlotte. Holds on to Sweet Charlotte. But Mike Bennett came out. Yes, he didn't. He's not the world heavyweight champion today, but he showed the fight of a great champion. He showed the fight of a world-class competitor. He showed the heart that he had in years past, in promotions past. He took his shot, and by damn, he gave it his all. And somehow, some way, as you mentioned, the national treasure fights his way to hold on to the gold. He knew that he knew that he was in the fight of his life. You could see it in his face. Nick Aldis, still your NWA world heavyweight champion. What a chaotic scene. You got it, you got it. Think there's mutual respect here now between champion and challenger. We're gonna let this play out and we will see you next week on Prime Time Live. an exclusive interview with the champ. You've retained Nick Aldis still holding the 10 pounds of gold, but what a hellacious battle you just had with Mike Bennett. You know, for a man to truly find himself, sometimes he has to be tested to a point that he's never been tested before. And standing here today in Long Beach, California, I can tell you with absolute sincerity that I was tested to my absolute limit by that man, Mike Bennett. And I could sit here and make all the claims I want with all the bravado I want, but the reality is, is that was about 51.49 today. I don't like those odds, but what I do like is this championship belt being represented by the absolute best and by the utmost competition. So in that regard, I applaud you, Mike Bennett, and I welcome you back anytime you want, because make no mistake about it, his name is Mike Bennett, and he is a professional wrestler. He's just not the national treasure and the real world's champion. What a match and what a way to end today's program. Keep in mind, you never know who may show up in Memphis. After all, we are the fastest hour in pro wrestling. And today flew by so fast, we're all out of time. And once again, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you Memphis for helping us sell out every ticket available for our February 14th TV taping. Tickets are available for March 7th, but we promise you not for long. Right. We'll even get a glimpse of a few stars you'll be seeing real soon on Championship Wrestling from Memphis. Tune in next week as we'll not only introduce you to our brand new women's division roster, but the NWA Women's World Championship will be on the line in our main event. Don't miss Thunder Rosa versus Priscilla Kelly, aka WWE NXT's latest signee, Gigi Dolan. Plus, New Japan Pro Wrestling's Carl Fredericks will be competing, Danny Limelight is in singles action, and so much more. I am Dustin Starr. She's my Maria. Say so long, everybody. Tickets are on sale now for March 7th TV taping. ChampionshipWrestlingMemphis.com.